Good morning and welcome to All the Press. It is that time again where we'll take a look at the headlines and try to make sense of it. And with me this morning to do so is uh, Dr. G.D. Lawson, who's a public affairs analyst, and um, Daniel Odupe, who is a legal practitioner. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Good to have you on this uh, Friday morning. So we have a... We have the nation, we have the vanguard this day, and the punch up for review this morning. But we'll begin with the nation newspaper, and I believe it will be displayed now. Governors uh, renew pledge on new wage, federal government to pay areas. That story is on page 10 of the nation newspaper. And Buhari halts NDDC board uh, cleared by Senate, MC to run agency. That news again is also on page eight, has already displayed there on your screen and uh, we have a story on missing kid on the police arrest 10 for arson and governor urges for calm that story is also on page five of the nation newspaper now pro obaseki group rejects apc reconciliation panel on page eight and the big story as you can see is adoke under interrogation over 1.06 billion dollars malabu deal and then it's there on the front page, but it's continued on page seven. Low revenue, a threat to budget. Front page also continued on page seven. And uh, to the left, we have electricity tariff hike imminent. It's on the front page there. But it's also continued on page 12. And Nigeria remains 31st in the world. I think this is on sport. And yes, sports news there, but continued on page 47 also. And then Lekki Koi Bridge go cashless from January 1st. That's some good news for those who fly that route. So U.S. Senators on Trump trial on the front page also continued on the back page. And then we have PDP youth leader dies celebrating Mackinac's victory. Wow. That's on page 42. And NGC okays jobs for 33 judges on page 34 of the nation newspaper. Shall we begin, gentlemen? Um, let me begin with you, uh, Daniel. Which story is catching your attention, so to speak, this morning? Um, I think um, we may start with the big story of the day. I thought as much. Yes, yes uh, let's do the, it. The <laughs> um, Aduke interrogation. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Nigerians are interested in this particular story. Um, I think it's not even limited to the Malabu oil deal. You mm -hmm. know, as, as uh, former Attorney General of the you know, he wielded so much power and, you know, some of the challenges that are facing today, some of the controversies, you know, are traceable to, you know, whether or not he, he held this, you know, he utilized his power very appropriately in the best interest of Nigeria. I just hope that, um, you know, the federal government follow due process. I mean, you have everything to gain when you follow due process. I think the government should just do the right thing. Mm. I, I, I went through the story earlier this morning and um, there were already some controversies whether or not the court actually vacated the warrant of arrest issued against mm -hmm. him. That, and that the federal government refused to ensure that that is served on Interpol. If that had been done, maybe he wouldn't have been arrested. But I just, I just really hope this morning that the federal government follow due process. I mean, mm -hmm. you have everything to gain. I mean, once you just need to do your work properly, get all the evidence you need, and then, you know, because indeed he has so much questions to answer. Even mm -hmm. while he was there, he, had, he has always been a controversial figure. There are so many questions he needs to answer. Nigerians want answers. Nigerians mm -hmm. want things to be done the right way. We want to learn from this. The current administration will not be there forever. You know, someday somebody will open the book of record against them as well. So mm -hmm. let's indulge it the right way this time around. That's what we, we want answers, basically. Yeah. Dr. Jide, you want to say something? I saw you loaded uh, in information. Uh, well, I, I, I can't agree more mm. with what he has said. Um, practical reality is just that um, the Malabu deal has been uh, on everybody's lips for a while. Mm -hmm. So I think the earlier the, uh, the air is cleared, on what went on mm -hmm. and who is uh, culpable. If there's going to be anything or anybody that's going to be dealt with, let's get the person dealt with and let's move on. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. But it's just unfortunate that each time our leaders are out of office, they have questions to answer. I mean, not just only in his case. It's, just, it's almost like that's uh, the routine when you see people are out of office. Why don't we just have people finish their office in clean books and don't have any questions to answer? They would, well, um, f f first, first of all, you have checks and balances while you're in office. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that can only be done when you have vacated office. And this is an example of, I mean, government is a continuum. So somebody is holding the seat today does not mean that uh, whatever he has done cannot be looked at mm -hmm. once he has left. So the, it's a continuum. So it's still the government that is going to be accountable. What this present government is doing is just trying to say, okay, 
we met this. This is not what impression we got. Mm -hmm. So can you please clear the air? And if there's any wrongdoing associated with what, then we'll deal with it. Okay. Uh, one thing we also need to do is to ensure that we be a strong institution. The reason why, more often yeah. than not, we are not able to question those who are in power, even this kind of admission inclusive, is because we just like to weaken our institution, be strong, we have strong individuals here and there. That won't work. Mm. If the institution were strong, if the judiciary were not subject to all kind of bullying, not just, I didn't start with this administration, you know, if the legislatures are doing their job appropriately, you know, maybe you won't have as much questions to answer as is. Mm. You know, during yeah. during the, the previous admission, we had ministers who were referred to as super ministers. They with us so much power. That shouldn't yeah. be, there should be checks and balances in yeah. the system. Mm -hmm. You don't wait for people to leave before you, you know, ask some questions. All right, great. That's a good intervention. All right, have, let's move away from that story now and go again back to you, uh, Dr. Jide. Uh, which other story is catching your attention? Uh, well, of course, the minimum, the new minimum wage mm -hmm. is. Um, so, 2020 budget, you want to develop the economy, you want to grow your pop I mean, grow the resources of your population as mm -hmm. well, and then you're talking about a new wage. Now, there's been so much going on about the new wage, there's so much, so much recommendation. The government has said we will pay, mm -hmm. the states are saying we will see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Based on what we have. What we have. Labor is saying you guys are not fulfilling your own end of the deal. There have been negotiations, and I, I mean, uh, I think I saw in the news that there's a proposed planned strike coming soon yeah. in line with this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, let this item be sorted out before we get into the new year. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know what they expect to earn and when the money will be due. Because there are some states that have not even set up committees, uh, you know, for the implementation based on state level. So we wouldn't, I mean, it shouldn't be a case where this is moved into the new year and in the new year people are still talking about, am I going to pay or I'm not going to pay? It's not a good thing. The argument of the states has been that, look, no, no, um, two, no two, fingers, two fingers are equal, really, that mm. some states are richer than others. And mm. for me, um, it's just a very, I don't know, it's a very sad situation for us as a country because if you look at it, we are only from the main, from the main issue. Which, in my opinion, no state is too poor to pay minimum wage. Of if you 30, look at, yes, if you look at it, it's just that you know um, we, we we don't appropriate uh, you know, the right values to things. If you do, we need all of us, all the states, and if we need to go back to the drawing board and break it down, look at our budget. There are certain things that we spend so much money on mm -hmm. that we should not be spending money on. You know, the, the governments, the, the government needs to lead by example. You cannot, how can you tell people, your, work, your workers in the states that you cannot pay 3,000 and they know how much you, ex governors are earning. Yeah. They know how much, you know, you the as a I mean, it's just, it's just so much. You need if, to lead by example. If That's, I may, if I may to jump in on what you said. Now, that minimum wage means minimum wage, meaning mm. that some states can, can pay, pay more, more than, than that, that as they are. Mm. So the fact that some states are giving that argument is slightly un not tenable. Mm. Just, just because, yeah, I hear what you mean there. All right, so, okay, I think because we have other stories, and I can see that some uh, stories are repeating itself, unless somebody wants to, any other intervention on this paper? Yeah, uh, Pro-Abaseki group rejects APC reconciliation panel. Any thoughts on that? I don't know. The, I think the 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 the, the dying in those states is just is just interesting. <laughs> and I, a friend of mine said the other day that I hope. I hope Obataku won't eventually be embodied. I, I really love the use of that mm. word. Wow, that's <laughs> but, a new. But, <laughs> but it won't be embodied. You, as in, it just it's just really interesting and. Mm. I, and and, and that brings for again the issue of internal democracy. Things should be done the right way. You know, it happens all the time. Somebody who is in the corridor of power somewhere says, you know, whatever you guys are doing, you are on your own. You know, people should. I mean, whether at the state, whether in terms of at the level of governance or at the level of the parties. Mm -hmm. Strong institution building internal democracy is so key. People, people should learn to follow the rules. The fact that you are the national chairman or you are the state government, I mean governor right now, does not mean that you now begin to, you know, try to perpetuate serving power longer than necessary. Mm -hmm. what, what does the rules say? I don't know why we just we just find it difficult to follow the rules. I mean, because in, in, my, in my opinion, the two parties, you know, you just can't tell. They, they are both trying to, you know, is it like is really a, a wrestle to you know who is more powerful. I think they will eventually win. But mm -hmm. the basic problem, in my opinion is that 
people just refuse to follow the books. Mm. What does the, they have a constitution of Augustine. The party has a constitution, and then this part also has been on for seven months now. I don't know how it's going to end. You know, but I mean, it's possible that the, the, the incumbent government might not even get a ticket. They will continue like this. But mm. it's just it's just interesting for me. I, but I, I'm just curious to know what the rule says. And that's the constitution of the party, and who is you know refusing to who is going who is defaulting basically. That's also the main challenge. Okay, so we'll move on from that paper, and then let's take a look at. Um, this day, again, it's almost the same thing. Buhari disbands Odubu led NDDC board, asking interim management to stay until after forensic audit. That's on the front page, uh, already displayed there. And this day says a dog had deported from Dubai, arrested by EFCC. The federal government said $29.96 billion loan bid doesn't involve states, says governors. Insists minimum wage adjustment must be based on capacity to pay, just what we finished talking about. And of course, Mr. President was in Kano uh, for the inauguration of cadets into the Nigerian police. And there's a picture story to that, as you can see. And then the Boundary Commission to Appeal Court's ruling on Rivers and Bielsa Oil Federal on page 8. And that's about it on uh, this, on the Vanguard, this day rather, this day newspaper. So um, any thoughts, Dr. Chide? We're not going to talk about Adoke okay again. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let me, let me continue from where, where he, he stopped. stopped. Yes, please do about continue from process. where he stopped. He's been referring to the fact that there's been a failure in process. And you can see that with the... So do you agree? With the, I, I agree. With the NDDC board issue. So, the, first of all, the uh, Akpabio-led Niger Delta Ministry mm -hmm. nominated an interim board. Buhari went ahead to inaugurate a board that the Senate approved. Mm -hmm. And it backtracks and says, okay, put the interim guys in place and let's get a forensic audit. Which I, which I think should be the way to go. Mm -hmm. The interim guys have a mandate. Let's get the books looked at. Let's sort things out. So that when the new guys, the uh, substantive board comes on board, you can now give them a clear mandate. The okay, right is. this is an additional mandate to what you guys have been brought on board for. You need to get this, this, and this done, mm -hmm. which I do not think is appropriate for an interim uh, uh, board to do. Mm -hmm. But then they can supervise the forensic audit and ensure that skeletal uh, activities of the NDDC continue in the interim while the audit is ongoing. Mm -hmm. So you think it's a good move anyways? I, I, I do. Okay. I do. All right. Um, FG's uh, 29.96 billion loan bid doesn't involve states, go, uh, states, according to the governors. And we've talked about the capacity, um, minimum wage, based on what, who is able to pay what. Well, we don't quite agree that that's the best way to do it, but that's what the state governors are insisting on. We'll move on from this in the interest of time and then go to the Vanguard newspaper. Again, the big story, the story there is minimum wage. You can't give us December 31st deadline. Government, uh, governors tells, uh, tell NLC on page eight, uh, federal government to distribute 10 billion naira trader money loan in 2020. That story is on page 19. Money laundry, 22 S governors, many senators on the probe. That's a, that's a huge one on page eight. And then Malabu PNID, Adoke returns arrested by EFCC. The same story. International passport seized, detained in a Diagbon house, we'll say two, and all of that. And then we have next to take two trillion naira pension fund for road power rail projects on page nine. Trump impeachment action uh, moves to Senate. Uh, missing boy in Undo Church, police arrest 10 suspected arsonists. And that's on page six on controversy as Buhari and uh, you know others rejig of NDDC board on page 12. Um, now, um, yeah, let me just talk about the silver lining in the dark cloud of this um, headline. That's the issue of um, NEC, you know, mm -hmm. approving the two trillion pension fund for wood and power. You know, the I mean, any responsible, you know, regime, you know, in Nigeria in the past uh, since it's not democracy, it's obvious that the primary and the most important, you know, objective should be fixing our infrastructure gap. It's it's appalling. It's, I mean, we are, we are, I don't know, many nations of the world, including in Africa, are light years, you know, are light years, you know, ahead of us. And it's just, it's just a sorry situation. And I hope that, you know, this kind of initiative will help us. Obviously, mm -hmm. our budget for the past, how many years now, 
you know, there has not been a sufficient appropriation to infrastructure, uh, infrastructure development generally. And you just mm -hmm. wonder that, you know, if you look at the way, that's why, in my opinion, I think we just don't appropriate value to the right things, you know. You see the, what we spend money on, we spend money on paying, you know, hefty, hefty allowances and packages for Renovating these guys. And, and then, the and then, you, and then things like this that will, because the shortest cost to, you know, um, Creating employment, which is something we need so much, is, is fixing infrastructure, mm -hmm. the, the power sector, the roads, and you know, I just hope that this kind of initiative will, will go a long way, and that corruption will not even, you know, cripple it again. That's another big issue that we have. People just want to, you know, if you if you, if you remember, the pension fund has something that suffered severe setback in the past, and, That's correct. you know, as a result of corruption. You know, so I just hope that you know, things that the federal government will shine their their, their light on this, and mm -hmm. then you know, go all the way to you know, put all hands on deck and ensure that. You know, we, we record massive improvement. When this administration came in, the promise they made to Nigerians has been that they were going to do some of these things, you know. Mm. So we want to see tangible changes in our infrastructure. You know, I mean, look at Lagos, for example, and even the rest of Nigeria. No country with their population we depend almost entirely on road transport. This is not done anywhere in the world. And I just hope that we we'll just, we'll, we'll be more serious. We'll focus on the serious, these are the serious things in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I just hope that it will be a result for us as, as a people. Okay. Did I saw you affirming that, so do you yeah, want to I, talk I about something else? I was affirming, but I don't like the fact that they have to take the money from the country. Okay, so that's another angle to it. <laughs> but, but this is standard procedure. This is not limited to Nigeria. This is what is done. I agree with standard it's, procedure. They are called institutional I agree with standard <laughs> procedure. Mm -hmm. Question is, now, this government takes it takes the loan, who repays it, how does it go back, who is accountable for it. Just like, you know, you went with my own line of thought towards the end when you were talking about the setback that the pension unit, mm -hmm. uh, yes. pension fund yes. has had over the past uh, few decades. So, and you end up having individuals in their 60s and 70s, which I think is absolutely disgraceful, mm -hmm. queuing, waiting, some even some traveling sick. from... To, I mean, we have electronic transfers now. And There's so much to come. abuse that is, that, that is perpetrated on that in the name of pension. And then with this fund going in, and just like we said, like the Malabu thing, guys go out, you now need to come back and start to account. If it's properly done, it exactly. is a great I, I, idea. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Properly done, it's a great idea. But Again, if it's not properly done, we'll lose both ways. Yeah, I think, again, the biggest issue here is, is the issue of corruption. Because if you ask me, if you look at the templates in the developed countries of the world, um, investing in, in infrastructure is about some of the safest use of pension funds, you know, mm. because infrastructure will definitely fall into, especially in a place like Nigeria, that we, we really need it. I mean, whoever, whoever is in the deal for the, you know, the Lekki Expressway that was, you know, you know, Constructed many many years ago, they used to be engineered up to now because yeah, we have to stop. Like because the toll and you know, infrastructure is something that if you do it well, if you do not allow corruption to fall into it, mm -hmm. you people you get really the get the returns. You just need to, what we just need to deal with is the issue of corruption. You know, I mean, due process again. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> due process, due again. process. process again. again. All right. Did anybody see the story of the missing boy in Undo Church? Yes. Okay. That so that is rather that. unfortunate. Mm. The child was uh, said to have been found in the altar of the church. Yeah. And then the uh, residents in that area got all upset, mm -hmm. and jungle justice took. It was quite unfortunate. Took over. Mm -hmm. So I, um, it's unfortunate that we have to resort to that. But I really, so, I mean, both sides were both victims, mm -hmm. and we're all also guilty because we know we can't, to some extent, they probably felt they could not rely on the police. Mm -hmm. Because if this guy was probably taken in, he may have paid his way out. Out of it. And they just felt we needed to deal with this guy. And so no, 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 so uh, yeah, it's, it's an unfortunate situation. And I just want to hear my view on the issue of jungle justice. The truth is that as bad it's as we way have, way. it is never right. It is it's, never, it's, it's you'll, be, you'll be shocked. I mean, one, 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 one maxim we have in law is that we say, um, all the other patent, that is, hear the other side. You'll be yeah. shocked. Anything, I mean, I'm not excusing what has the happened, act. but... It is never right to do just jungle justice because mm -hmm. I mean one thing I always tell people is just imagine yourself in the shoes, you know. I mean you you, you have little to lose if you allow the due process. At best, I mean this is something that is in the, in, in the papers. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure the, the owners of the church, whoever they are, the sides will be able to will be able to go scotch free. No, because no it's matter, already in it's the open. I mean, so mm -hmm. it is never. It's just never right to do jungle justice. You'll be surprised. 
what what actually I mean you just be surprised. So oh, it is fire. never it is never right to the solution. solution. I mean all we need to do is to be more vigilant, ask questions, make sure that things are done properly. Yes. I mean just that's always the right thing to do. And all right. to uh, thank you so very much, uh, Daniel Odupe, legal Absolutely. practitioner and Dr. Jide Lawson, public affairs analyst for coming on the show this morning and to make sense of it with me. And that's where we're going to call it a wrap for today. We'll continue this next week from Monday to Friday, same time, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okui. Have yourselves a great weekend.